Hello, welcome to today's event. What I'm going to be talking about is what everyone needs to know about skin cancer and how to prevent it. I'm Roxana Chapman and I'm the Chief of Dermatology at William Beaumont Hospital. Basically, the skin functions as a container to keep the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. If we didn't have our skin, we would lose our body fluids. It gives each of us a unique appearance, yet it does so much more. The skin acts as a barrier, an immune defense mechanism, through which specialized nerve endings allow us to feel touch, light pressure, pain, and temperature. Vitamin D is processed in the skin when UV light is absorbed. When we age, so does our skin. Fine wrinkling is a result of intrinsic aging. The skin on your buttocks is representative of what your skin would look like without extrinsic aging from the wind and sun exposure. Aging can be accelerated by sun damage and often produces deep wrinkles and bumps in the support tissue. Scaling areas on the ears, nose, and forehead may result from precancers or actinic keratoses. These may become cancerous if not treated. Smoking also causes skin changes in the skin and increases the risk for certain skin cancers. Sun damage is also largely responsible for producing skin cancer. About one in five Americans will develop skin cancer. Three types of skin cancer frequently occur, basal cell skin cancer, squamous cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. Basal cells and squamous cells cancers affect more than a million people in the United States each year. Melanoma is deadly and causes about 8,500 deaths per year. Melanoma is the leading cause of death in young adults and is the sixth most common malignant neoplasm in the United States. The risk of melanoma in Caucasians is one in 50 compared to one in 1,000 for African Americans. A, B, C, D, E's of melanoma stand for changes that should prompt a visit to a doctor or a dermatologist for a possible biopsy. A stands for asymmetry, B stands for border irregularity, C is for color change with variations of brown, tan, or black, D is for a diameter that is larger than the pencil eraser end, E is for evolving or changing mole. A new mole should always be checked. Who is at risk for skin cancer? People with sun exposure and people with intense intermittent sun exposure and sunburns. Patients with a family history of skin cancer, immunodeficiency, or certain genetic defects are more likely to develop skin cancer. Scars, open sores, inflammatory skin conditions, and exposure to radiation and to certain chemicals such as arsenic and petroleum byproducts may increase the risk of basal cells and squamous cells. Patients with a family history of melanoma, atypical moles, and frequent sunburns are more likely to have malignant melanoma. What's the good news? Most skin cancers can be detected by the patient himself. In fact, most melanomas are detected by the patient, friends, or family when they're aware of signs of melanoma. A skin cancer should be suspected if you have a new or changing mole that has unusual color or shape. A pink bump that's new or a shiny pearly papule that bleeds easily could also be a skin cancer. Most cancers don't have symptoms in their early stages. An open sore that bleeds, oozes, or crusts and remains open for three or more weeks should be examined. So how do we protect ourselves from cancer? Plan ahead. Wear a hat, protective clothing, a UVA and UVB sun protective factor of 30 or more. Reapply a sunscreen every two hours. Observe for changes in moles. Teach our children sun safety. Examine your skin monthly. Call your dermatologist if you see any unusual or suspicious changes in your moles. Tanning indoors is dangerous. The American Academy of Dermatology has designated the first Monday in May as Melanoma Monday. During this time, dermatologists have volunteered their time to do free skin cancer screening. Troy Beaumont will be hosting a Melanoma Monday on May 7th, 2012, and I hope you all bring your family uh, for an exam. Thank you.